Welcome to our first worked example of where we're going to apply mesh analysis to a circuit. Uh, before we begin, if you haven't watched our previous video, uh, which was an introduction to mesh analysis, it's very important you do that first because we're jumping straight in where we left off in that previous video. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll link that in the description as well. So let's take a look at this circuit here. It looks very similar to the circuit that we had in our introductory video, but now we have some, uh, some circuit values. We've got some voltages marked on and we have some uh, resistance values here as well. And so we're going to set up our two equations, our system of equations, exactly like we saw in the previous uh, video where we introduce the topic and we'll see a system of equations that looks like this. Again, if you've not watched that introduction, this might not make very much sense at all, but it's worth going back to watch that first. So we have, um, for our first pane here, we have 12, 12 volts being equal to I1 times 6K plus 6K because we have a current, I'll mark that on here, current I1 um, in this pane here, flowing through those two components, minus I2 over here, um, flowing upwards through this 6K resistor in the middle. And then we have our second equation, minus 3, because our 3 volts is in opposition with our positive clockwise convention. We have minus 3 volts, and that being equal to minus I1, um, this I1 current flowing down through the 6K, uh, plus I2 flowing in this pane here uh, through the 3K and the 6K respectively. And so we have our two equations there. You'll notice that I've um, rearranged these terms so that they're always in order, I1, I2, I1, I2. And that becomes more important in more complicated examples later on when we're using matrices. We'll see some examples where we use matrices to solve um, systems of equations. Um, it doesn't matter so much now, but it's worth getting into the habit of reordering those terms in order. So in this particular instance, we've got simultaneous equations that are quite easy to solve. Uh, in this case, we could double the second equation here. So we, rather than minus 3, we'd have minus 6. And doubling the rest of it, we'd have uh, minus I1 times 12K plus I2 times 18K. And that means that these two I1 terms will cancel if we add these two equations together. So 12 plus minus 6 is going to give us 6. These I1 terms cancel, they disappear. And these I2 terms are going to add up to give us uh, I2 times 12K. And so just a little bit of rearrangement, really. Uh, 12K representing 12,000, obviously, we can rearrange um, to say I2 equals 6 divided by 12,000. And that gives us 0 0.0005 amps, or better yet, 0 0.5 milliamps. So now we know the value of I2, and what we can do is substitute this value of 0.0005. Uh, we can substitute that into either of our original equations, and we'll skip the working, but that rearranges to find I1 uh, being equal to 1.25 milliamps. So now we've found the values of these currents I1 and I2, these mesh currents. And to be honest, on their own, they don't really mean all that much. We've just made up these currents, I1 and I2. We've drawn these clockwise currents in and we've found their values. Let's suppose that we're asked to find the current that flows through each of these resistors here. And these two resistors along the top, the 6K and the 3K, these are probably the easiest because there's only one current flowing through them. This 6K resistor on the left here, only I1 is flowing through that particular component. And so we know I1 is 1.25 milliamps. Same on the right-hand side, 3K. 
um, we know that there's only one current flowing through that um, that component. It's our current I2, and we've said that I2 is 0 0.5 milliamps. Where things get a little bit more interesting is this middle resistor here, this 6K resistor that runs down the middle, because there's going to be two currents flowing through this particular resistor. We've got I1, this 1.25 milliamps, flowing down, if you look at the clockwise direction in the left-hand pane, flowing down through the 6K resistor. And we've got a current of I2 being equal to 0 0.5 milliamps flowing up. Again, looking at that convention in the right-hand pane, that clockwise current is going to be flowing up through the 6K resistor. And so the total current flowing through this middle resistor is going to be the difference. Uh, it's going to be I1 minus I2 uh, because these currents are in opposing directions. And so the total current through that central resistor, we could, we could write it like this. I, we'll call it IR. Um, IR is equal to I1 minus I2, which is 1.25 minus 0.5, remember we're in milliamps here, and that's going to give us 0.75 milliamps. So I hope you found this video useful, a simple example of mesh analysis, and in our next videos we're going to look at some slightly more complicated examples as well.